But as a young girl, I would find countless love letters that were stored in my mother's memory box, and many of them contained marriage proposals. I recall sifting through them and marveling at what it was like to have so many men pining for you. But again, the reason it was much easier for women in those days to find a husband is that dating was serious business. Marriage was the goal. So dating was therefore given the weight it deserves. I often speak of R&B music of the 90s because I'm so fond of that time period. And there's no singer I'm more fond of in that period than Tevin Campbell. So when I hear Susan Venker speak of love letters that she found of her mother containing a variety of marriage proposals, instantly my mind went back to Strawberry Letter 23, sang by Tevin Campbell, a song which he actually covered from the Brothers Johnson. The song begins. Hello, my love, I heard a kiss from you. Red magic satin playing near to. All through the morning rain I gaze, the sun doesn't shine. Rainbows and waterfalls run through my mind. This is the beginning of a beautiful work of art that has been covered many times over. This song stands as a reminder of how powerful love is as a motivator for men. These gentlemen sing of a time of which Susan Vinker speaks of in her latest video. So for example, during World War II, many couples got engaged or married because they didn't know if or when they would see each other again, right? And that circumstance no longer applies. So we wouldn't use it as a benchmark for marriages today. In my mother's day, for example, she was born in 1930. Women could afford to casually date around or even date several men at once because why? Why would that be? They weren't having sex with these men. Dating in those days was focused on dating for marriage, not dating for fun or with no commitment in sight, the way so many couples do today. In the garden I see west purple showers, bells and tea, orange birds and river cousins dressed in green. Pretty music I hear so happy and loud. Blue flowers echo from a cherry cloud. In Ernie Barnes' 1976 painting, The Sugar Shack, we see a representation of black people getting down as often happened in the 1970s. Strawberry Letter 23, a song of this time, appeals to the desire for romance even in the era of free love of the 60s and 70s. A message that varies quite distinctly from the one you hear from young men today. Men be wanting to treat them like princesses, but y'all act like n bro. In today's generation, in today's society, the average female is an 18 year old n bro. Y'all ass talk like a n you move like a n you walk like a n y'all live like n bro. Y'all eat, drink, sleep, go to the club, smoke hookah, you live like a pirate, real life, bro. All y'all do is crab broils, drink, and smoke. That's a pirate based lifestyle. And then you be coming to the n talking about something. Why can't you treat me? And, and, and let me live in my femininity and let me let me be submissive. You don't want to be submissive. N the moment a nigga try to goddamn be a nigga, bro, the female goddamn is like, you're doing too much. Da -da 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 -da. Hey, bro, I ain't finna get into that shit because it's a very controversial statement, but a lot of people can agree. Females be saying they want to be feminine and they be saying they want to live inside they, uh, they goddamn, what's that shit called? They be wanting to live inside they, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called. They soft girl era. Y'all ain't no soft girls, y'all is thugs. Y'all females around this talking about some Brody and no cap and y'all be out here calling me twin and some more shit, man. The day a female called me twin, all that princess shit out the window, man. Use the bro on God. And you shouldn't feel no type of way when I treat you like the bro. The f twin. Feel sunshine, sparkle, pink and blue. Playgrounds will laugh if you try to ask. Is it cool? Is it cool? If you arrive and don't see me, I'm going to be with my baby. I am free. Flying in her arms over the sea. As a man, there are certain things that's mandatory that you should pay for in a relationship with a woman, okay? For example, her rent. That's number one. No woman should be paying her own rent if she's in a relationship with a man, all right? Her car payment, her light bill, her groceries, absolutely, she should never pay for groceries. Her gas, her insurance, because I mean, if you're paying her car payment, you might as well pay the insurance as well. Don't you care about her safety? Yeah, pay the insurance. Shopping, okay? Your woman should never have to spend her own money to shop. I mean, what is the point of her having sex with you? For her good health? No. 
take her shopping. Diamonds, okay? Diamonds are a girl's best friend. So if you're in a relationship with a woman, it is mandatory that by the six month mark, you buy her some diamonds, okay? And if your girl wants surgery, pay for it. Why not? Guess who's gonna enjoy it? You. So yes, get her a new pair of jugs because you can play with them, all right? It's not for her benefit, it's for your benefit. Pay for her titties. Stained windows, yellow candy screen, see speakers of kite. With velvet roses dig in freedom flight. A present from you, strawberry letter 22. The music plays, I sit in for a few. Let's face it, the current dating scene sucks. It's terrible. People are hanging out without any structure or plans for the future, which again, doesn't teach you any skills that are gonna help you build a successful marriage. These so-called situationships, which if you haven't heard, well, I'm sure most of you have heard, but situationships means you're in some sort of something with someone, but you have no idea what it is that you're in. It's a, these are a big fat time waster. A string of failed relationships are not going to prepare you for marriage. If anything, it prepares you super well for how to end a relationship. The song then goes into a series of oohs, which if you've ever heard the song while being in love with someone will make your back tingle. He sings of the joy of receiving his strawberry letter 22 from his girlfriend and the joy he has responding to her with his own strawberry letter 23. One of the unfortunate regressions that I've noticed in modern day culture is an enhanced focus on the transactional nature of relationships. There is a time when the veneer of romance was still there, even if veiling a desire to marry someone with life changing financial status. Yet now, when I hear of young men speak of the dating market, I see young men growing in their disillusion of the current market. And at the same time, I see young ladies not only expressing their dissatisfaction with the peers that are available, but are doubling down on a game that simply cannot be won. And what is this game? Technology, social media, and hookup culture have changed the landscape so dramatically that those of us who are over 50, let's say, can't relate. So many parents, though, in my generation tell their children to date around a lot and to worry about marriage later. The problem is this advice doesn't work in the culture we live in today. In my mother's day, for example, she was born in 1930. Women could afford to casually date around or even date several men at once because why? Why would that be? They weren't having sex with these men. In a time now where we are free to explore our physiological urges in a way that we were never allowed in times previous, why does there remain so much angst and tension in the modern dating market, especially for young women who are freer now than ever before? In an environment where more and more men are falling out of the dating market and are looking for alternatives to the Western dating market, the question must be asked. Was there something that our grandparents knew and our great grandparents knew about sex and relationships that we've forgotten? and we're now learning the hard way? Did they understand that meaningful sex with fewer partners was more important than exciting sex with a wide variety of ones? What did they know that we didn't? Dating in those days was focused on dating for marriage, not dating for fun or with no commitment in sight the way so many couples do today. There was no rampant shacking up going on and there was certainly no hookup culture. So when you're dating somebody and not having sex with them, it's much more easy to, uh, to, to quote unquote date around or to keep things light. The advice to worry about marriage later and stay focused on career today is bad advice because with traditional dating dead and casual sex normalized, prioritizing career will almost, almost always, or certainly lead to a string of broken relationships. In the song Strawberry Letter 23, they mention rainbows, waterfalls, shower bells, pretty music, sunshine, and velvet roses. They mention the colors red, purple, orange, blue, yellow, and velvet. The first line of the song begins, hello my love, I heard a kiss from you. And it ends with a present from you, Strawberry Letter 22. The music plays, I sit in for a few. Perhaps there is nothing that could the culture of love poems faster than emotionally void sex and transactional relationships. And if you're one of the people setting the price of the modern day market, which in this case is being set by young beautiful women, it is them who have chosen hookup culture in place of the love letter culture that is no longer with us. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.